So the idea with limits is that if we use limits, we can slowly change a secant line to a tangent line. So here's an example of a secant line on the diagram given. The slope of this line would be the average between point A and point B, the average speed. But if you wanted to find out how fast a person is going right at A, and I had an applet, but they didn't update my Java, so I'll show it to you tomorrow. Well, unless they don't update it tomorrow, then I'll show it to you the next day. But what it allowed me to do is to put my finger on this point here and take that point and drag it along the curve. Okay. What happens as I drag it along the curve is my secant line would then change. Right here, my secant line is here. Okay. Eventually, we want to see at this point, the tangent line would look like this. And I hope you can see where the blue line is right now is a better estimation of the slope than the original black line was. Now, had I taken this blue point and moved it down to there and then drawn a new secant line, it would be even closer to the red line. If I drew it really, really close and I drew the secant line through those two points, it would be even closer to the tangent. If I would do the limit as that blue dot approaches the other dot, I would get the tangent perfectly. The problem with just plugging it in is if they are perfectly aligned on there, then I have no change in x and dividing by 0 is bad. So you need to approach dividing by 0 and then see what happens. And as you approach dividing by 0 and see what happens is this change in x gets closer and closer to zero, you will get closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line and be able to find the instantaneous rate of change or the tangent at that point. Here's our first formula. So the slope is rise over run. If we look back at our diagram, this is one value for y. This is your other value for y at point a. And f of x minus f of a would just be the difference in your y values. And that's your rise. So that's why we have f of x minus f of a on the top of our equation. On the bottom of our equation, we just have a run, which, as you can see from the diagram here, once I erase these, that's just x minus a, because we have our x coordinate here and our a coordinate there, and that distance between them would just be x minus a. Now, we want the limit of x to approach a, so that x gets really, really close to a, and then that secant line will become the tangent line. If you want to play around with the applets yourself that don't work on my computer right now, I've got the, the links there. But uh, my Java is not working. So we want to find the slope of the tangent and the equation of the tangent line for y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 at the point 2 comma 1. We've got our equation 1. We want the limit. Our slope is equal to the limit as x approaches. And here, we're approaching 2.
on the top we'll have f of x minus f of a. So we will have f of x is just our 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 minus, and since a is 2, we would plug in 2. which would be 3 times 2 squared minus 6 times 2 plus 1 over x minus 2. And I'll let you play around with that, see if you can simplify that so that you can actually figure out the limit. How did your simplifying go? So we would write m, whoops, m equals limit x goes to 2, x minus 2, we have 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 minus, and once we do all the math in there, we get one inside the brackets, and then combining our like terms, our top becomes, our slope is still equal to, I know it's annoying, but you need to write the limit as x goes to 2 every time until you apply the limit. The top will just be 3x squared minus 6x, because the ones will cancel out, and you can factor the top. There's a common factor of 3x, leaving you with x minus 2. should make you feel happy because at this point now that you've factored it the x minus twos will cancel out and now you can apply the limit and say our slope is when I plug in two six so that's the first part of our equation that they asked us to solve it said find the slope of the tangent and the equation of the tangent line. So now this goes back to grade 10, reviewing equations of lines. Just a quick review of equations of lines. You know line is y equals mx plus b. So we know this is what an equation of a line looks like. Do you know other equations of lines? This is the slope intercept form. Do you remember any other forms? If not, we'll use only this form. That's called the point-slope form of the equation. The point-slope form, if you try to remember it that way, is not easy. The point-slope form is easier if you just think of your slope equation. But instead of using x2 and x1, just call it y and x. And if you multiply both sides by x minus x1, you get exactly this. So it's just a rearrangement of the slope formula, per se. And of course, there's the most useless form of the equation of a line, the standard form, which tells you nothing. ax plus by plus c equals 0, which is just a way of putting everything on one side and making it equal to 0. But we're going to start with y equals mx plus b. The key to finding any equation of a line is you need the slope, which we just found, and you need a point on the line, which is given to us in the equation. Our point is 2 comma 1. Now once you have the slope and the point, if you use y equals mx plus b, well, you know the slope is 2. You don't know the b value, but you know that when x is 2, y is equal to 1. So you can plug in the slope, and you can plug in the point. From here, simple rearrangement tells us that the b value has to be negative 3 by subtracting 4 on both sides. 
and then we can find the equation of our tangent is 2x minus 3. What's that? The slope is 6, and I wrote a 2. Yeah, that makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, thank you for noticing that. I should have wrote a 6 right here, and this would make our B value minus 11, and our slope is 6. Does that make a little bit more sense? Okay, good, good. You're like, oh, so... Yeah, I, I'm, I, do you ever do that while you're doing math? You like see, w you know the number is 6, but you're like, oh, this is a pretty looking 2. I haven't drawn a 2 looking that nice for so long that you get tempted to write the wrong number in the wrong place. Or you check your answers in the answer book and you look up the wrong answer and you can't figure out why you got it wrong. No, you've never done that? Yes? Okay. So then our equation is 6x minus 11. So just to recap what we did in this question, okay? If you are finding it at the point 2 comma 1, this is telling us that our a value is 2. Because what we're looking at on our graph, again, I'll go back to our original diagram here. Okay, if we're wanting to find it at a specific point and that point is 2 comma 1, then your a value is whatever the x coordinate is at the point you want to find. So that's an important key thing to review in this question, that when we're making our limit as x approaches a, that a value is 2, because that's where the x-coordinate is at the point where we want to find the tangent. Okay? Did you notice that when you plugged in 2, just some things as far as shortcuts go, when you plugged in 2 and figured it all out, you got 1? And that was given to us in the question. We wouldn't have had to actually work very hard at that because they gave us the point 2 comma 1. But it's not bad that we did that math and mental math and figured that out. Then from there, it'll work out that you can factor, or sometimes you might have to rationalize the numerator or rationalize the denominator. Use your algebra skills so that you can evaluate the limit. Once you're able to evaluate the limit, you get the slope as 2. <laughs> I mean, you get the slope as 6. And then you could figure out your equation of line from there. That's going to be such a good video. You're going to get complaints worldwide. Oh, man. <laughs>